Hey everyone, Dan from On One here. Welcome to the Browse module. This is where you're going to start when you use the app. It's where you're going to find the photos you're going to work on, manage them, do all those digital asset management sorts of tasks. All right, so first off, right in the middle, obviously, is where you're going to see the thumbnails of your photo. This is called the grid view. There's different views for your photos. If you want to take a closer look at a photo, simply double click on it. And this will go to what we call detail view. You can also change the views down here in the bottom. See, there's grid view right there. And there's detail view right there. There's also film strip view, which kind of marries the two together. It gives you a large version of your photo in the middle and then thumbnails across the bottom that you can scroll left or right with. The last one is compare view. With compare view, you can select two photos or three or four or as many photos as you want. And then you have the ability to zoom and pan those all together. That way you can kind of look at the same spot in each photo. All right, I'm just going to go back to grid view and let's kind of continue our tour here. Now you can change the size of the thumbnails down here in the bottom in the size slider. You can move it left or right to make the thumbnails larger or smaller. You can also just use the plus or minus keys on your keyboard to do the same thing. You notice on each thumbnail, I'm going to see the file name for the photo. In the corners, there's buttons to help you rotate the photo. And at the top, there's options for changing the star rating, the color rating, and the like state for each photo. You can select multiple photos just like you select multiple files on your computer. Simply hold down the shift key to select a range of photos from your current selection to where you'd like the selection to be. If you want to select photos that are not in the same sequence, you can just hold down the control key on a Windows computer or the command key on a Mac to select files in any sequence that you'd like. You'll notice that there's always one photo that has a stronger border around it. This is the super selected or the most selected photo. That's the one that you're going to see the metadata for over here in the metadata pane on the right. For each photo, you can see information about the camera that it was used, the lens that was used, when it was captured, important exposure information, and things like the color space and the file size. Below in the metadata pane, you can add your information, like your copyright information, keywords, and descriptions. You can also see, again, more of the EXIF, that's the camera information. You can also click on the IPTC tag, and here you can add in IPTC metadata, which is used for journalists and stock photographers. You could put in your full contact information in here as well. You can even save presets of metadata that you can apply. Now let's talk about how you actually find the photos that you want to look at. We kind of skipped that step. That's obviously a pretty important part of using a browser. On the left-hand side, you'll see the folders pane underneath the Browse tab. This is where you will find all the different places where your photos can live. The most common place you're going to find them is going to be on a hard drive attached to your computer or inside of your computer. Those are going to appear here in the local drive section. So you'll see any drive that's in your computer, any drive that's attached, or any network shares like a network area storage device will appear in this list as well once you've mounted it to your computer. When you click on one, it'll take you to the top of that drive structure. You can then simply roll it down to see the folders inside of it and navigate to find your pictures wherever they happen to live. At the top of the preview area, you'll actually see a breadcrumbs bar that shows you the path of the folder that you're exploring. And you can easily click backwards to go back a step. The browse also shows folders in the preview area as well. You'll notice that they have a square thumbnail and a folder icon in the corner. You can navigate into a folder in this view by simply double clicking on it to go inside of it. So if I want to look inside of my animals folder, I can just double click and it will drill down inside of it and show you the subfolders inside of it. And if I continue to double click down, it'll drill down until I get to the individual photos and video files. If I want to go back up, again, I can just click in that breadcrumbs bar at the top to navigate back up. There are a couple other ways to browse to your photos that are even easier. If you happen to use a cloud storage service like Dropbox, Google Drive, or Microsoft OneDrive, we'll detect those automatically, and you can simply click on those to explore their contents as well. And if you've installed the mobile app onto your iPhone or iPad device, you'll be able to see the photos that you've uploaded here in the mobile upload section. Let me jump up to the top for a second and we'll talk about catalog folders. You can also create a catalog folder. Think of it like a shortcut to a folder that you use all the time. For me, I keep all of my photos in one folder called personal images. And inside of that, I keep everything divided up into categories based on genre. And then inside of that, potentially locations and then sublocations on top of that. 
it makes it easy for me to find my photos and I don't have to go through and use some sort of a cataloging app to keep track of them. I just keep them in simple folder structure that I can view on my computer's hard drive. The great thing about a catalog folder is that it keeps an eye on that folder structure. Any new photos that are added, it keeps an eye on. Any metadata that changes or any photos that go away, it just keeps an eye on them in the background so that they're always ready to search and browse very quickly. To add a catalog folder, simply drag it right here where it says drop your favorite folders here to catalog. And then it'll just keep track of it for you. Below the folders pane is the album section. An album is a visual list. You can create an album to keep track of photos that live in different places. You can also create what's called a smart album, which will automatically find photos based on a certain criteria. You could create one that searches for certain times or certain color ratings or certain keywords, for example. And again, we'll cover that more in another video. Below that is the filter pane, where you can filter and search based on metadata or just about anything. Then there's the tethered shooting pane, if you want to attach your camera and fire it and download the photos remotely. And then we also keep track of the recents down here as well. All right, a couple more things. On the left-hand side, there are shortcuts to common places. You can automatically browse directly to your desktop, to your pictures folder, to your catalog folders, to your local drives, to your cloud sources, and to your albums. Then on the right-hand side, you'll see the module selector, where I can select my current photo or group of photos and send them to the modules like Develop, Effects, Layers, or Resize. You would also access the Panorama and HDR options in here as well. Once you've edited your photos and you want to export copies of them, you'll click right down here on the Export button. This will open up the Export drawer where you can select where the photos are going to go, how they'll be named, what size they'll be, and what file types they'll be. When you right-click on a photo, you'll see the contextual menu. Here you have quick access to a lot of the different functions that you'll do on a photo. Things like changing its metadata, rotating it, editing the capture date, copy and pasting settings from photo to photo, deleting or renaming, creating new subfolders, sending it to modules, or sending it to other applications. The last place you're going to look is up in the menus. The menus contain a lot of the same stuff that we just saw in that contextual menu. You'll have those same options in terms of being able to change metadata, rotate photos, copy and paste settings, things like that. There's also the handy help menu, which will take you to the On1 tutorials and the user guide where you can learn even more. All right, last thing before I go, you can also import your photos from your memory cards or from your camera using the import dialog. So if we go to file and import, It'll open a special dialog that detects memory cards or cameras attached to your computer and helps you download them to the folder on your computer where you want to keep them. It also gives you some handy options along the way, like being able to rename, add metadata, or change the capture time all at once, so you don't have to do it in multiple steps. All right, that's kind of the lay of the land where all the great features in Browse live. Thanks for watching.